Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are discussing about Jira in this playlist uh, tutorial series understanding more about what exactly Jira is. So I think uh, in the previous tutorial we got a very good understanding as how to create a cloud instance to start working with Jira. But today we will have our first navigation, a basic introduction to what exactly uh, the project details are which you will find uh, once you enter into a project and how you can create a new project as well and definitely understand more about different options like issues, reports, workflows and the various parameters including the settings of the project which will be very important for anyone to know. So looking forward for all of you to get into the details of that and make sure that you know each and every option which you generally find by default uh, when you look at uh, the first time on the projects within the Jira project. So uh, let's get started quickly to understand more about the same today. As a part of previous tutorial, we understood how to set up a Jira account as a cloud instance and start working with that. In today's tutorial, we'll be getting furthermore to get into the detail of Jira account and understand how to create a new project what are basically project details which you can navigate to and understand more about Jira and also enabling issue management as a part of the Jira project. So today, let's explore all these options. To do the same, the very first thing will be you will be using your credentials which you registered with to log in in your Jira instance our Jira account. By default, when you land up and log in inside the project for the first time, you will see the default project which was created earlier by default while creating the account itself. If you want, you can continue using this project, but also if you want, you can also create a new project at any point of time. And yes, we will try to understand more about the same as the first option. So generally, when you come to the Jira software, you can always click on the Jira software button to reach out to the home page of the Jira which will definitely bring you back to the same page where all the projects which you are associated with will be listed by default. The second thing is the your work option that is what is that you have contributed in different projects at any point of time. So right now we have an empty project so it will not show up anything. The next option will show you the list of projects which you are associated with and you can switch between the projects using this option if you are having multiple projects or you can go to all the projects which you have access to and also create a new project. Additionally, you do have options like filters, dashboard, adding people to your project or making use of any app which you can use it from the marketplace or create an issue. We will be using all these options one after the other in the upcoming tutorial. So just have patience, relax and learn things in nutshell. So let's create the very first activity as the creation of the project. Now the moment you click on create new project, just like the previous process in the previous tutorial, you will be prompted that do you want to go with classic or next gen project. Of course, you can have a quick comparison about this and we will have a separate tutorial to understand more about the difference between classic and the next gen project. Right now, for our tutorials, we are using a classic template and using the project as scrum type. So let's name our project with something like my test project. So by default, the project name will be taken as the key uh, the first letter of each word which you use as a project name. So MTP becomes your short form for the same thing. If you want, you can change your template right here as well, just like done in the previous process that is switching between Canvas, Scrum, bug tracking or an exchange template as well. But yes, we are going ahead with Scrum as of now. We will definitely talk about the other templates as well in one of our tutorials. Click on create to proceed ahead. As soon as you land up in the next page, you will be by default taken to the home page of this particular test project which you have created. That is, by default, whenever you land up inside the project, you will be taken into the active sprint because that's the most common thing which anyone would like to see when they log into the Jira at the morning first time in a day, which will definitely help you to determine how much activities we have done, what is that which is going on, what more to do at any point of time. So as a part of the active sprint, you will be shown the table which basically talks about the board that is what is to do, what is in progress and what is done. 
Of course, right now we are looking at an empty project, so things might look quite neat and clean. But when you start working on this project, it will be after a few tutorials that everything is filled up with a lot of information. Now, let's understand what exactly do we have under a project. So navigation is plays a vital role here to understand everything that you should know what each option consists of. The very first thing is of course your project name with the type of project which you have created will be mentioned below that. Don't forget the MTP shortcut is the short name of the my test project. The first letters of each word is created as a project key which will be always accessible to you at any point of time. So drop down here to see or access the boards. If you have two projects right now, you will see the boards of both the project. So you can click on the project board of the project and you will be taken back to the project of the same thing. So this is what your default board is, which is showing you the different tasks in different columns. When it comes to the backlog, of course, the backlog shows you the task management board, which includes the product backlog and definitely shows you any kind of activities which you're performing as a part of your sprint and different releases. So if you want, you can manage your releases from this option that is versions. You can manage your epics using this option, clicking on epic. You can create an epic and you can create a sprint by clicking on create sprint button here. Next option is this reports. What kind of reports do we have in Azure project? When we create a scrum type project, we definitely have a lot of projects reports which are available by default. Additionally, you can definitely download additional reports from the app section that is the marketplace. So as a part of by default, we have a lot of reports and they are categorized into different sections like agile specific reports like burn down chart, burn up chart, sprint report, velocity chart, cumulative flow diagram and whatnot. There are a lot of projects which are associated with your Jira Scrum project. And definitely you can make use of all of them at any point of time depending on your objective criteria or assessment what you want to do. Let's go back to the project. Next option here is issues which generally allows you to manage your issues or we call it as issue management. Issue is any type of work item which you can create under a project and if you remember if you have not remember what exactly issue is you have a link on the card at the top on the i button. You can go back to a agile tutorial which I've already created for you. You can quickly refer and understand what exactly issue is all about. So definitely an issue will show you different work items which you have created and you will have filter criteria on the top and definitely all the issue types listed here. You can go ahead and look at all the issues type. You can open only your specific issues or reported by you, open issues, done issues, viewed recently, resolved recently or updated recently. You do have a lot of options to create favorite search items which we will see in the upcoming tutorials. Let's go back to the project again. The next option is components where components allows you to create a physical component like a feature here. So just when you talk about the traditional approaches, they, we manage every object as a feature or functionality as a feature. Same way here, you can create a component in order to determine a feature of the application which can be further related to various sprints, various items or different issues which you create as a part of the project, which will have definitely a good traceability to showcase that what exactly you're doing and how exactly it is being covered as a part of different activities or different approaches which you're following as a part of the project. The next option is code. The code basically allows you to integrate any external options to manage your code management. For example, you have Bitbucket, GitHub, GitLab. You can connect to any of these sources where you are managing all your code for a particular project and these can be very well referred to within your Jira project. For example, if you want to have a good code coverage or at least having a requirement coverage in terms of your test cases, what you have created, then definitely these code coverages can help you to determine that how your codes are being integrated at any point of time. And at that point, what are your test cases which are executed in order to make sure the request is met. The next option here is releases. No matter what you do, the very first thing is you start with is determining the releases. So yes, you saw this option in the active sprint on the left, but yes, you can start creating your first release here and definitely all the other, other options like creating a sprint, talking about the backlog or different uh, work item types like task will be created under this release. 
So no matter what you do, everything must be related back to the release in which version you are going to cover them. And this is where you can declare a version and you generally determine the start and end date of the release. We will be creating them in the upcoming tutorials. The next one is the project page, which generally talks about the heavy documentation which you may have about your project. Could be a documentation like requirement or test plan or maybe any sort of documentation which helps you in terms of managing the test cases or it could be organization test policy or test strategy, anything which you want to manage in form of documentation, you can obviously have them here under project pages, which any of your team member can at any point of time can come to this section and definitely make use of the necessary information just like a Wikipedia. And you will have all necessary information being lined up here so that a tester or a developer can always find the necessary information. But of course, you do have more. You have different templates which you can make use of. For example, you want a blank page and design it according to your need or you have project requirements or managing the requirements here or you want to make certain decision based outcomes like the communications or making alternative outcomes, meeting notes, retrospectives. There are a lot of templates which are available and definitely you can make use of them in order to optimize your way of working. Another option here is add item. Add item to this project that means anything external which you would like to include to your project. For example, if you see the pages are included by default. But if you want, you can have a repository to manage your Bitbucket or GitHub repository as a part of the code and a shortcut to use certain page pages like URLs at any point of time to include them in your list as well. So the quick navigation option on the left will have these options automatically linked to your account. The last option is the project settings. Of course, this is completely the settings behind the screen for a particular project which generally is given access to the administrator of the organization for the JIRA in the server-based instance. But when it comes to cloud instances, you are the administrator and you have all the rights to set up your own settings according to the project needs which you may have. Remember, from the first tutorial when we talk about the introduction to JIRA, we did discuss that what exactly the configurations are. The tool can be customized according to your need. So of course, the very first thing here is about project settings like details. What kind of details do you want to have when you create anything as a field? What about the people who will be accessing your project like the teammates? You can definitely configure them or determine them about their details. So right now, we don't have anyone in the project. It's just me alone. Maybe you are interested. You can join my team and we can work together on this. You have automation scope as well, like if you are using any kind of automation tools, you can integrate them using certain add-ins and definitely enable your automation frameworks as a part of your preparation for the Jira execution project. Similarly, you do have options like issue types, what kind of issue types you want in your project, which is like specific work item types. So by default, we have story, bug, epic, task, subtask. So where exactly the test management is, we will see that in our upcoming tutorials because we will be installing an additional app to enable test management as a part of the Jira project. Similarly, you have issue layout, which will show out the details of each issue, that what exactly the layout will be used for that. And you can, want, you can go ahead using the edit option to customize it. We have workflows, we have screens, we have fields, which are listed with any type of work item. So if you look at quickly the fields here, you will be able to understand that what are the fields which will you will be getting when you create an issue by default. And if you want, you can customize them further at any point of time. This will allow you to customize your specifications of each item accordingly. And definitely we do have options for each one of them, like the code, the version, component, obscene, and permissions. Permissions is another important thing which we need to take care of because being an administrator, you can determine what kind of rights people will have and how they can access a particular project at any point of time. So you can define administrator projects, browse projects, manage sprints, view development tools, view read-only workflows, and what not. There are a lot of such options which we can definitely cover, but not in just one tutorial. We'll be getting into the details of the same in our upcoming tutorials, one after the other, in very simple and nutshell way. Well, so as a part of this tutorial, we have understood how exactly we can create a new project and of course working with uh, navigation to the project UI and issue management 
is disabled by default these days. So if you talk about the previous versions of Jira, issue management has to be installed as a app to the marketplace. But now in Jira 2020, you get by default enabled issue management within your Jira project by default as a scrum type. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to answer your queries and respond them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.